Tony is a true, true champion for victims' rights everywhere. Uh, he knows that real justice starts by helping victims of crime and discrimination, and he at the Department of Justice leads the way in our collective fight to bring relief to victims. Under the inspired leadership of our Attorney General and people like Tony West, the Department of Justice will certainly continue its historic role as a protector of civil rights and civil liberties for all Americans of every race, creed, color, or religion. So if you would, please give a warm welcome to the Associate Attorney General, Tony West. Thank you so much. And thank you, Andre, for those very kind words, very kind introduction. It is a great privilege to be here and to be able to be here to thank you, really. Thank all of you on behalf of the United States Department of Justice for your dedication to crime victims, for all that you do in your own communities and in tribal communities around our country. Uh, you've come here together in a spirit of compassion, a spirit of hope to help those who, who've been hurt and to lift up those who've lost so much. And we are truly grateful, truly grateful that you do this very difficult, compelling, life-changing work. And uh, I'm very proud that the Justice Department can play uh, at least a supporting role to you uh, and your colleagues as you do this important work. Uh, earlier this week, I participated in the White House Tribal Nations Conference where I moderated a discussion about strengthening uh, our government-to-government -government relationship. And while I heard, certainly heard many areas where improvement is needed, uh, I've also heard that we've come a long way in a short time. Under the leadership of Attorney General Eric Holder, we at the Justice Department have worked hard to strengthen tribal sovereignty and improve tribal safety. We've established the Office of Tribal Justice as a permanent component within the Justice Department. We've created the Tribal uh, Nations Leadership Council to facilitate consultation and to advise the Attorney General on issues that are critical to tribal governments. We've launched a national Indian country training initiative which has trained more than 2,000 criminal justice professionals. And we've assigned additional federal personnel to investigate and prosecute crimes on Indian lands, including a dozen FBI Indian country victim specialists. Our work in Indian country is far from over. And if we're to build on the progress that we've made and tackle the uniquely difficult challenges that tribal communities still face, then we cannot rest. We cannot rest as long as crime rates in many tribal communities remain far above the national average. We cannot rest as long as tribal members suffer disproportionately from violence, property offenses, and other criminal acts. And we absolutely, we absolutely cannot rest as long as Native women continue to encounter alarming rates of violence, something that is simply unacceptable. <laughs> Through our Consolidated Tribal Assistance Solicitation, or CTAS, we've revamped and streamlined the process for tribes to tap much needed federal funding, awarding more than 300 grants, totaling almost $350 million over the last three years in several critical areas, including the fight to curb violence against women. In addition, our Office for Victims of Crime, in partnership with our National Institute of Justice, is working to support victims through the National Sexual Assault Forensic Exam Telemedicine Center, which will provide expert consultation to sexual assault forensic examiners in Indian country and in other underserved areas. We're also supporting Sexual Assault Nurse Examiner and Sexual Assault Response Team Programs, or SANE SART, in Indian country, and where we're working to identify sustainable, evidence-based, and culturally sensitive practices to address Native victims of sexual violence. 
And in conjunction with this conference, we've convened the first meeting of a national committee that will advise the Attorney General on ways that OVC and its partners can expand engagement with stakeholders to end sexual violence in American Indian and Alaska Native communities. In partnership with the Bureau of Indian Affairs and the Indian Health Service, we've consulted with tribal leaders on this issue. And what we've heard loudly and clearly is that a tribe's ability to protect an Indian woman from violence, regardless of race of the assailant, is fundamental to that tribe's sovereignty and essential to that tribe's safety. Well, we agree. That's why under Attorney General Holder's direction, the Justice Department has proposed addressing these gaps by changing the law to better protect Indian women. You are not alone in this effort. We will continue to do everything we can to support tribes as you work to keep victims safe, as you work to hold perpetrators accountable. I also hear a sense of optimism and a sense of hope, a belief that the wisdom of our shared past with all of its highs and lows can open the door it can open the door to a better shared future. You know, I've, I've witnessed the extraordinary power that tribes find in their traditions, and uh, I've seen the amazing results that can be achieved when, when tribes build on those traditions and claim ownership over their future. And so long as we and the federal government continue to do our part as long as we fulfill our trust responsibility, I truly believe that we can seize that future together, that we can shape its success together, that we can move forward in common cause together. So thank you so much for having me today and again thank you for all that you do to support and serve crime victims in our country.